Thanks, uh, Warren, and thanks very much to everyone who's taken the time to come out this evening to be with us. I know everybody's busy, so it's great to see a number of people who are interested in learning a bit more about this subject. As Warren said, I'm a lawyer and I'm from Toronto. That's kind of like two strikes against you before you even start. Do you sell used cars? <laughs> that would be three and we haven't got that yet. <laughs> so. At the same time, I will try to do something that some of my co colleagues aren't that great at, and that is kind of be brief and uh, not get strike three. The thing that I'm here to talk about this evening is an environmental issue, and that's the area that our law firm works in. We're a small firm. We partner with a lot of people on these types of projects, and some of our partners are right here, people like Carmen, that have been uh, of great assistance in putting this claim together. Generally, for about the last 10 years, our firm has been taking on David and Goliath battles and acting for David, and fortunately being relatively successful. So the claim that we're probably best known in the legal world for is now the largest environmental class action ever certified in Canadian history. A claim that began a number of years ago on behalf of residents of the town of Port Colborne. And that claim has gone all the way up to the Supreme Court of Canada, successfully getting certified. And we've just completed the trial of that matter. And we're now waiting for the actual decision on the merits of that case. Some people say you can't fight the government, you can't fight the big companies. We don't agree. That hasn't been our experience. So a number of months ago, a gentleman by the name of Ian Hanna and a group of people, residents of Prince Edward County down by Belleville and Trenton came to us and they said, we're very concerned. We've heard a lot of this information, like what you've heard from Dave, like what you've heard from Carmen, and we're worried. And we know there's this thing called the Green Energy Act that's coming down the pipe. What can we do about it? The Green Energy Act, the regulations, which are the detail of these things, came out back in September of last year. And amongst other things, they created a 550-meter setback or separation distance between industrial wind turbines and your homes. And that's what the government says is safe, and that's what they put in that regulation. Well, less than 30 days later, we launched a legal challenge to that setback. Why? Well, you talk to somebody like Ian Hanna, and he'll tell you, Ian's a farmer too. His farm is on Big Island. And Ian wasn't convinced, and more importantly, I guess, from a court's point of view, a lot of experts from around the world are not convinced that that 550 meter distance is a safe distance. Might be, might not be. And right now, nobody really knows. So the legal claim that was launched was simply to say this. In our legal system, the international legal system, the Canadian legal system, and the Ontario legal system, there's a thing called the precautionary principle. Everybody knows what it means to be cautious, and I think most of us generally are. We don't take big risks. And the precautionary principle is a legal principle that's been recognized by the Supreme Court of Canada and basically around the world. And it simply says one thing. When you're not sure about something that may cause significant harm to the natural environment or to people, don't go ahead until you kind of got that straightened out. Don't take the chance. It's a pretty simple concept and it's part of our legal system. Well, you've already heard from Carmen and you've already heard information tonight from Dave. There is a lot of uncertainty and it is very clear right now that there may be problems when you get industrial wind turbines too close particularly to people. Now, Carmen's right, and you heard at the end of her presentation, her conclusion, which is we need more studies. And that's because the information that's available right now 
is people's stories and people talking to their doctors and people talking to experts, but it's not been organized. It hasn't been that kind of, you know, what Warren was referring to earlier, epidemiological study, the hardcore science study with large groups of people that you can say are, you know, statistically significant. That hasn't happened yet anywhere in the world. But I think anyone who's been in this room for the last hour and 20 minutes might have some idea that maybe it's a good idea to do that before we go further. And that's all the claim is. Let's put the brakes on, slow down a little bit until we know one way or the other what's truly a safe distance because that just hasn't been done. Now, as Dave was referring to, people around the world are waking up to this. So for example, the government of Japan, they have started these epidemiological full-scale studies. And those are ongoing right now. And other people in other parts of the world are calling for these studies. And as Warren said, <clears throat> so are 60 other municipalities right across this province. So if you're thinking maybe it's a good idea, you're not alone. There's a lot of other people that agree. And we will be asking the Ontario Divisional Court to agree as well. And that's what the Ian Hanna claim is, simple as that. Let's hold on until we know a little bit more before we get turbines all across the province. That claim right now is moving ahead by legal standards almost at a rocket pace because we're actually going to be in court for the main hearing that's currently scheduled for the 30th of September of this year. Now, we are in the middle of some of the procedural back and forth that always happens because it's the government, the Attorney General's office, that's representing the government on this thing. So not surprisingly, there's a few differences of opinion between us and them about, about what the proper evidence of that hearing will be. But the court date is still scheduled, and that's where we're going on the 30th of September to three judges sitting at Osgood Hall in Toronto to get this decided one way or the other. All we have to prove, in our view, is a maybe. Not that industrial wind turbines do create harm for people, and frankly, you might well have that belief, and you might have a lot of other people join you in that belief right now. We don't have to even prove that much. We just have to say that there may be a risk of harm, and until that gets straightened out one way or the other, it's not a great idea to go ahead. On that basis, we believe there is a very real prospect of this legal claim succeeding.